okay, so now we are doing M1, January 2015, IAL, question number six. <coughs> A question about um, <coughs> statics, moments. Okay, uniform rod AC of weight W and length 3 3L rests horizontally on two supports, one at A and one at B, where A, B equals 2L. Okay, so first of all, let's just draw, we've got the rod from A to B. Okay, let's call that A. Let's call that B, uh, A to C, sorry, A, C. Okay, that's A, that's C. Okay, you have a support at A. Let's draw the support at A. Okay, there's a support at A. Let's put, let's put on A. And we've got one also at B, which is um, somewhere over here. Okay, so let's say that's B over there. It's like that's 1L, that's 2L. Okay, so that's B. All right, so we know that um, it's a uniform rod AC of weight W. Okay, so let's put some of the forces in here. A uniform rod means the weight is evenly distributed all the way along the rod. So we can assume that the weight acts right in the geometric center of the rod. So basically, if it's 3L, then 1.5L along will be the weight. So let's put, the, let's put something in to show the weight acting down exactly halfway between A and C. Okay, so that's the weight, W. So that's like Mg, so we don't have to write the Mg. The weight is the, is the actual weight. All right, we also have two other forces acting. We've got the reaction force at A, and the reaction force at B. So I'll call that Ra, and I'll call that Rb. Okay, um, what else do we know? Okay, let me put some of these lengths in. Um, I'll do that in the end. Um, now, a particle of weight 2W is placed on the rod at a distance x from A. The rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium. Find the greatest possible value of x. So if we put a weight somewhere between A and B, this thing is going to still be in equilibrium. It's not going to tilt or turn. Okay, anywhere between A and B, there will be no, uh, like, you know, uh, turning effect happening. All right, because those will be acting upwards, these will be acting downwards. It, there won't be any turning effect. Only if it's past B, you'll see some sort of turning effect where it might start tilting upwards. Okay, if you put a weight here that's heavy enough, or for, for, for as far as, or as far enough away from B, you'll have some sort of a, a turning effect. It might start tilting, you know, upwards. It might start, you know, ending up going like this. Okay, so. The weight, or the, the force that we're talking about, this um, weight that's at the particle, uh, weight 2W, has to be somewhere on this side. Okay, so that's the particle of weight 2W, and its distance from, um, its distance from A is X. So that distance is X. Okay. All right. Now, and we know that this distance here is 1.5 times L. And we know that this distance here is 2 times L. All right? And we know that this distance here, yeah, 2 times L, that's all the distances we have. Okay, that's X. Now, in this particular case here, all right, what we've got to be aware of is the fact that for x to be the greatest possible value, it's going to be at a point such that it's just before this is going to start tilting. Okay, it will tilt about b. Eventually, it will start tilting about b. So, you know, it's, it's going to be something like this. Okay, let me draw a line. You know, just before this thing starts tilting, all right, it'll start tilting about B. It'll start. It'll start tilting like this. It will start tilting. Okay, just before it starts tilting, okay. Like, let me just show you from here. It's going to start tilting eventually. It doesn't want to move. 
Okay, no problem. Okay, so it'll start tilting. Now, at the point where it starts tilting, this reaction at A is going to be zero because it's just about to leave A. Just about to leave A. All right? So, what we can say is RA has to be zero. So, if we resolve the forces up, upwards, we've got RA plus RB equals all the downward forces are W plus 2W, which is 3W. Now, if RA equals zero, okay, in this case, then you can say RB is equal to 3W. So, this is equal to 3W, okay? And so, we know the, the, the size of that force. So now we can find, um, you know, what we want. We can find, basically, the value of x by taking moments. All right. So if you take moments, okay. Uh, let's take moments about a. We could do it about b actually. Even, um, yeah. If we do it about b, if we take moments about b, it would cause us to have um, less forces to deal with. Okay, because that's zero, and we have these these two. So let's take moments about b. Okay, now, um, if I take moments about B, then this distance is X minus 2L, okay, from there to there. Okay, this distance is L, uh, sorry, not this distance, what am I doing, not that distance, huh? That's x minus 2l. Okay, sorry, this distance here. Okay, um, if if that's 2l, that's going to be 0.5l, isn't it? Because that's 1.5, that's 2. So that distance is 0.5l. Okay, that distance is x minus 2l. Those are only two forces that we're going to deal with because we're taking moments about b. See, one of the reasons I'm, I could have taken moments about a, that might have been easy in terms of dealing with the lengths. Then you've got three forces to deal with. If I take moments about b, I know that this thing has to be in equilibrium. So the, the force, the, the, the clockwise and the anticlockwise forces must, um, you know, balance out. They must be equal. So the clockwise forces are 2w times x minus 2l. And they're equal to the anti-clockwise forces, which are W times 0.5L. Okay, so we can find the greatest possible value of X now. Okay, let me move this stuff down. It's going to be in terms of W, of course, and um, L. So we've got 2WX minus... Oops, 2WX minus 4WL equals 0.5WL. Okay, so we have 2WX is equal to, that's going to be 4.5 times WL. So we can just divide both sides by 2W. So we end up with X equals you're going to have 4.5 WL over 2W. Of course, the W will cancel, and you end up with 2.25L. That's the value of X, 2.25L. Okay, and I'll do part B in the next, next video.